Welcome to the home of the blessed people. Raising a people of power and purpose with a passion for Jesus. Enjoy an atmosphere of God's presence, a place of love and excellence, a place to be, a place to belong, and a place to become. This is Royal House. Father, that no God, that there is nobody that is like you. Search all the world, we can search all the world, Father, Lord, I can find nobody like you. You were the best, you were the best, you were the No one, no way. No one, no way. No one, no way. Sing no one, no way. No 
Sing it out today.
is running after, it's running after me. Yeah. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Sing your goodness, your goodness is running after, it's running after me. Your goodness is running.
work yesterday were not paid $200 an hour. I know that. <laughs> well, so what I'm just saying that, I'm, I'm just using, what I'm saying is that no matter how much they're going to pay us, when God called for a visitation and said, I want you to come together, let's take that serious. The Lord bless us in Jesus' name. And we're looking forward to Awakening 2024. Like I told the ladies yesterday, I said, I don't know where God is taking us to, but God can be calling us for a weekend retreat, whereby we go on a Friday and just come to Sunday service like this. So we're waiting on God to receive the next instruction. Hallelujah. And don't forget the book club, uh, Treasure book, Blue, uh, book, book Club. Hallelujah. So please get your copies. And uh, this Sunday, August 5th, by 7 p.m., we'll be having our first uh, review of the chapters we've read for the week. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Father, we thank you. We we'll bless your name. The hour for your word has come. Holy Spirit, we ask you to visit us this morning. We have come to receive from you. We have come to meet with you. We have come, O oh Lord, Father, to you, O oh Lord, not any man. And we pray, O oh Lord, that as your work come for this morning, it will come for our power to heal the sick, to save souls, O oh Lord, Father, to minister life unto us in the name of Jesus. Father, we lift up ourselves into your hands, O oh Lord. We receive grace, O oh Lord, Father, to receive your word, O oh Lord, Father. The receptive heart, O oh Lord, Father, to receive that which you have in stock for us, O oh Lord. And the grace to be the doer in the name of Jesus. Father, I lift up myself before your throne, that you will cause me to speak as your oracle this morning, and to minister with your ability in the name of Jesus. That every word that comes out of my mouth, O oh Lord, Father, will minister life unto your people. That everyone under the sound of my voice will not remain the same. Thank you, Father. We we'll bless your name, O Lord. We we'll give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we we'll pray. Hallelujah. We thank God for this month. It's our month of walking in his fullness. That is, it's our month of walking in God's fullness. And our scripture for the month has been Ephesians chapter 3, verse 19. The Bible says, To know the love of Christ which passes knowledge that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. When we're talking about the fullness of God, I believe so many ministers of God have come since the beginning of the, of the month. Pastor has laid the foundation, minister unto us. I mean, teachers, uh, we've received from other ministers about the fullness of God. I'm just here to add to what everyone has said. The Bible says line upon line, precept upon precept. Just to add another layer, to, minister, to push us, to take us to another level. And when we talk about the fullness of God, it's the totality of everything God is. That is his, his attributes, his character, his perfection, his holiness, his power, his love, his divinity, the fullness of God. That is his desire for us this month and every day of our life, not this month only. Every day of our life is to walk in his fullness. That is to walk in, in his attributes because we are created in his image to be like him and to function like him. That is we are to walk in his attributes. In his character, his perfection, his holiness, his power, his love, his divinity. The fullness of God is God's nature. That is who God is. And this is the life that God wants us to live. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 19, the Bible says, In Christ all the fullness of his deity lives in the bodily form. Colossians 1.19 says, it was, his, it was the Father's good pleasure for all the fullness to dwell in Christ. 
What am I saying? Meaning that Jesus is the fullness of God in bodily form. That is the fullness of God we're talking about is in Jesus in bodily form. The same way the fullness of God should be in us in bodily form as we live here on earth. And the goal of every believer, the desire of God, the expectation of God, and I believe that should be the goal of every believer, every child of God, is to be filled completely with God. That is the fullness of God to be in you. So that his character, his attributes, his love, the divinity, his divinity, his power will manifest in our life. So this morning we want to look into some of the characteristics of this God fullness. That is the life that God expects us to live. I mean, what kind of life do the Bible talks about that as children of God, we should live in the fullness of God. So this morning, I will just be sharing with us briefly on the message titled, Living in God's Fullness. That is, there is a kind of life to live. We've been hearing about God's fullness, God's fullness. But there is a kind of life that God expects us to live. One of the life and one of the kind of life that God expects us to live is the life given to the word. Word, W-O-R-D, not word. Sorry, my accent, I wish I can help. Yeah, the life in the word. That is the life given to the word of God. The life given to the remnant, not just any other word. John 1, 1 says, in the beginning was the word, and the word was God. And who was the, what, who was the word? Jesus. John 1, 1. Hallelujah. That's why I wrote my own scripture. I know God is helping us. But the Bible says in the beginning, it's the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Amen. Colossians 3.16 says, let the word of God dwell richly in you, not just sparingly, not just today, tomorrow, or you know today, or the next two days, but let the word of God dwell richly in you. Mark, uh, Matthew 4.4, 4, Luke 4.4 4 says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That is the word for now. There's a difference between words and the word. That is, we are to live by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And that word is the word for now, for that situation that we're going through, for our life, for our destiny, for that circumstance that we are in. The word we need for that moment, the Rema word. That is what we're talking about. The life given to that word is the life that is in the fullness of God. Hebrew 4.12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing through the marrows. So walking in God's fullness means you live your life. That is why we talk about living in God's fullness. Living your life on the word of God that is spoken to you now. That is the remnant word you receive from God now. Concerning that situation, concerning that circumstance, concerning your life, concerning your destiny. The word from God for now. You live your life by what God's word is saying, the remnant. Many of us are living our life based on the remnant that we received yesterday last week, maybe last month, the question I want to ask you is, what are you living your life on? Are you living your life on the word for now, the rema that you received from God? Or you are still living your life based on the rema you received last week, last month, yesterday? Yesterday. 
Jesus said one thing is needful. And we know what that is. That is what Mary was listening to. The word. You know, I was thinking while I was reading that scripture. That my, this is my thought. Because sometimes when I read the scripture, God said, Jesus said one thing is needful. Have we ever thought why Jesus visited them? I'm sure Jesus didn't come to eat. Sorry, uh, Martha was busy with food. That was what she thought, that Jesus came here to eat. But my belief and my thought is I believe Jesus visited them to give them the Rema word, the word for that moment that they need in their life, in their situation. The same way we experience God's visitation, we experience God's presence, we are here now. And the same way in our fellowship with him on a daily basis, to experience the word that he has for us. Because with the word, you can create many things. The Bible says by his word, he created this earth. All God was just saying is, let there be. And the Bible said there was. All that you need in life, all things you ever need in life, is wrapped up, is found in the word, the rhema. You need a promotion at work, it's wrapped in the word of God, the word for now. You need a child, you need a job, you need breakthroughs, you need healing in your body. All that you need is wrapped up in the word. That is why as children of God, we have to live our life based on the word. But the word I'm talking about is the word for now. Because two months ago, you might be, you might be strong and you use a scripture. Now, if you are going through another challenge, you need to go before God and receive a fresh word from his throne. And that is what we call by walking in the fullness of God. You are living your life based on on the word of God. Giving your life totally to the word. You just don't speak any word, but you speak the word. Words are powerful. Just words. You know we have to be careful with what we say. Words are powerful. But the word is more powerful. That is the rhema. The word for now is more powerful. Meaning everybody, anybody can say anything that can produce result. But a life expressing the fullness of God. A life living the fullness that God wants you to live. Is a life that is born of the word. According to 1 Peter 1.23. Can we have that scripture? The Bible says we are born not of incorruptible sin. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. By the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. That is, a life living the fullness of God is a life born of God. Born of the word. Is the off, offspring of the word. Is a life that is called to live by the word. Is a life that is built on the word. Is the life that dwells on the word. Is the life that speaks the word. Is the life that is fashioned and shaped by the word. Is your life shaped and fashioned by the word? Are you dwelling on God's word? Is your life built by the word? That is manifesting Jesus to your world. That is just a summary that we're talking about here. Because Jesus is the word. You don't live your lives by any word. Not words from friends. Words from the parents. Words from, you know, out there. Not words from the streets. Unfortunately, as children of God, 
that we should be the one dictating, taking charge of the atmosphere through the word of God. We live our lives based on what other people say. Based by the word on the street. Maybe words from our friends, from our parents, from our acquaintances. We live our life based on the word on social media. As children of God, we should live our life on the word of God. Not as a result of situation or circumstances that we're going through. The word of God is limitless. You cannot limit the word of God. That is why when you speak the word here, you can send the word from here to Russia, to anywhere in the world. And that is what happened to the centurion when he came to Jesus. That the centurion understood the power of the word. He said, Jesus, you don't even need to come to my house. Just speak the word. And Jesus released the word. And the one went and met the child on that sick bed. My question to us this morning is, how have you been living your life? We said, is our month of walking in God's fullness. And living in God's fullness is what we're talking about. That says we live our life on the word. We are born of the word. We are offspring of the word. We are called to live by the word. How are we living our life? Are we living our life by the word of God or by the word on the street? That situation and challenges that we are going through or whatever situation we find ourselves right now in our life and in our destiny, what word governs our life? Whatever decision we're taking, on what basis have we made that decision? Is the word of God the final authority in our life? Yes, we said the word of God should be the final authority. But there's some part of our life that you say, God, no, it cannot be. Every other area we allow, but there's some area that we have kept away from God. But to live, the, to live in its fullness, the word of God has to be the final authority in our life. We have to be shaped and we have to be fashioned after the word of God. The Bible says, let the word of God dwell richly in you. Every day, Monday to Saturday, how much of the time do we spend with the word? Many of us, even the one we hear on Sunday, to even go back and go over it. No. Yes, we are in living in a kind of busy environment. But we need to create time. And the devil has used that to distract us. There's so much noise out there. So loud. So much distraction, but we are called to live by the word. Our life should be built by the word, and we are to dwell in the word. The Bible said this book of law shall not depart out of our mouth to meditate day and night. How much of this are we doing? To experience or to walk in God's fullness, our life must be a life given to the word, which is what we just talked about. Jesus is the word. So all we are saying is that when we live our life, when our life is built on the word, fashioned after the word, is the life of Jesus that we will manifest to our generation. Is the life of Jesus that people will see in us. Because we said the fullness of God is Christ, Jesus Christ, in bodily form. And if we are created to be like him and to function like him, that means whatever Jesus did while he was here, we expect, that is what we are expected to do. The same way Jesus will speak, 
and Jesus will always speak the word. The same way Jesus spoke, you know, when the, when the disciples, when they were going on the, on the sea and there was uh, the storm, they woke Jesus up. The Bible says he spoke. He released the word. The same way as children of God, living in the fullness of God. All we need to do when we're in that situation is to speak, to release the word. Does our life manifest Jesus wherever we are as children of God? So this morning, I'm just encouraging us. As we continue, because we're moving into another month. But this is what God expects us to do, to be. To live a life full in his fullness. To walk in his fullness. It's a process. It's, it's not a one-time thing. It's a life that will live every day. But it's also a life given to the word of God. Given to the rema. That is, the, the word for now, for that situation that you are going to. Let's bow our heads as we pray. I just want you to commit yourself unto the Almighty this morning. His plan for us is to walk in his fullness. That is his desire. That is his goal. That is his expectation. And that is what he has in store for us. At the same time, this is the life that must be given to the word of God, his word. How much of the word is in you? The Bible says, let the word of God dwell richly in you. The life given to the word is the life born of the word. Is an offspring of the word. Are you an offspring of this word? Is a life called to live by the word. Do you live your life by the word of God? Or you live your life by the word on the street? Or you live your life by the word people tell you, by what your parents tell you, by what your friends say, by what you hear out there on the street? Is a life built by the word. Dwell in the word. Is a life that speaks the word. The life that is fashioned and shaped by the word. How much of this word do you have? I want you to commit yourself into the hands of God and ask God for the grace to dwell in this word. The grace to live by this word. The grace to be built by his word. Father, we thank you. We we'll bless your name, O oh Lord. We we'll give you all the glory. We we'll give you all the praise. Thank you for your word that you have ministered unto us, O oh Lord. We we'll commit our lives into your mighty hands that cannot fail. You created us in your image to be like you and to function like you. Our life is the life born of the word. Because we are born of your word in any way we have not met we have not given our lives to you true i mean giving our life to your word oh lord that we have not allowed your word to live in our lives we commit ourselves we ask for the grace oh lord to help us oh lord help us to dwell in your word help us to build our life on your word help us oh lord to fashion and to shape our life by your word. We thank you, Father. We bless your name, O Lord. And for you to live your life by this word, you must have a relationship with him. To receive the rema we're talking about. It's not just the letters. You can be reading the Bible. You, you, I mean, you can just be reading and it will just be letters. But we, we're talking about the rema, the revelation of the word of God. You must have a relationship with him. And paraventure, there's somebody here that wants to say, I need this rema in this situation I'm going through. I need this rema in this circumstance in my body for the healing. You need the rema 
to receive your healing. You need the rhema in every area of your life. But for you to have this rhema, you need to have relationship with him. Is there anybody that is saying, Father, I'm coming to you afresh this morning to start a new relationship with you. You don't know the Lord as your Lord and Savior. For you to have relationship with this word, you need to have relationship with God. Is there anyone here this morning saying, Lord, come into my life. Can you signify by raising up your hands, all eyes bow, all eyes closed, please? Anybody asking Jesus to come into their life this morning? Can we signify by raising up our hands in the name of Jesus? Father, we bless you, we worship you. We give you all the glory, we give you all the praise. We lift up our lives into your mighty hands that cannot fail. Holy Spirit, help us, O Lord, to live a life full of your glory, a life that will bless you. Father, we thank you, we bless you. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Hallelujah.
have said we should do. Let there be testimonies that will abound to each and every one of us in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you and we glorify you. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God loves a cheerful giver. So please give cheerfully this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand on our feet and give our offering today and just worship with us as we do so. Thank you, Lord. emphasize that throughout the month of August, we are having the summer blast. What is the summer blast? We are going out to tell people about the love of God. We are going out to evangelize. We are going out after the service to speak to people about Jesus. And so all the Sundays in the month of August has been tailored for that purpose. Now, it will happen after the end of the second service, but that doesn't mean that because you came for the first service, you will not uh, participate. The way it's been structured is that it will be a location very close to where you live, and they will give you definite instructions about where to meet us, what time to meet us, and then we'll all go out together and do the evangelism, and then from there, we can all uh, go back to our various houses. I know some people might decide to come for first service now that we are having summer blast. So please don't do that. You are still part of the crew. We are all going out together for evangelism. Now that is good news. Is that not good news? Sharing the good news is good news. Hallelujah. 
All right. For more good news in the house, let's pay attention to the screen. It's time for the Royal News Network. God bless you. Good morning, Royal House. My name is Emily Girardi, here with the Royal News Network, welcoming you to service on this beautiful Sunday morning. Blessed people, we are still in our month of walking in His fullness, and my prayer for you is that you'll continue to walk boldly in the fullness of God through the remainder of this month. Once again, my name is Emily, and here are your morning announcements. Blessed people, this is a reminder that we're still continuing with our two services. Join us every Sunday morning starting at 9 o'clock a.m., followed by our celebration service at 11 a.m. And don't forget, Sunday school now starts at 10.20 a.m., and we can't wait to see you all there. Royal House, our water baptism class will be happening August 5th, starting at 10.30 a.m., live on Zoom, followed by the actual baptism happening August 19th at 9.30 a.m. For more information, please contact Deacon Jonathan at 905-650-5515. Again, that's 905-650-5515. Or reach out to him or Deacon Uche after service. Royal House, are you ready for All Nations Day? A day where every culture is represented. We are a multicultural and multilingual community with well over 32 nationalities present and we will be showing off our cultural heritage right here at 95 Church Street, St. Catharines on the 3rd of September 2023 at 10 a.m. We will also be having a world-renowned guest minstrel by the name of Eben and you do not want to miss out. Good morning, Royal House. My name is TJ and I am the HOD of the Courier Department. Are you a newcomer to Canada or the Niagara region? Or maybe you've just been trying to figure out how to navigate the Canadian job market. The Courier team is presenting to you a session titled Excelling in the Canadian Job Market. And in this session, we will be showing you how to build your resume, network, and achieve other goals that will lead you to attaining that career that you deserve. Please note that this event is open to all, young adults, young professionals, students, and even experienced professionals that are looking to change careers. If you want to attend, please make sure to see me after service or send an email to rhcareerteam at gmail.com. We look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Blessed people, this is a reminder that our Power Hour is still ongoing. Please join us every evening from 6 to 6.30 p.m. live on Zoom. And don't miss out on this wonderful opportunity to strengthen your prayer life. To all the young professionals in the house. We'd like to take a minute to say thank you very much for joining us last Sunday at the beach. It was a wonderful time in God's presence and it was a great opportunity to explore the theme of relationship red flags. Thank you for bringing all of your questions and we look forward to seeing you all at our next meeting. Please stay tuned for more information and dates to come. Once again, my name is Emily Girardi here with the Royal News Network reminding everybody about our upcoming baptismal class happening August 5th at 10.30 a.m. live on Zoom. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Royal House TV and follow us on all of our social media platforms at RCCG Royal House. Once again, it's been a lovely time in your presence this morning. I pray you have an amazing Sunday service and an even better week ahead. Hallelujah. with us for the first time once again can you please signify by 
rising up on your feet. Well, I know we have some people that we say have them. Worship with us for the Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Thank you so much for coming. Hallelujah. Thank you so much for coming. Please, can you do one more thing? Just bring your Bible, your bag, whatever you have brought with you. Just come to the altar here. Yeah? Let's put our hands together as they, as they come. Hallelujah. Thank you for coming. Uh, your bag, your Bible. Can the ushers help us? Let's come to the altar. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's keep on clapping. I'm sure we're not tired. We prayed for them and God brought them. And we thank God for bring for God bringing them hallelujah praise the Lord thank you so much for coming we thank God hallelujah just come come and join me here God bless you sir thank you so much for coming God bless you hallelujah let's put our hands together and can we face the audience can we turn royal house let's do what we love doing let's stretch forth our hands towards them let's pray for them God has brought them for a reason that God's name will be glorified in their life. The purpose which God has brought them will manifest and God will establish them in his way in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for your children that you have brought into your kingdom, into uh, this house to worship with us. We lift them up into your mighty hands that cannot fail. Holy Spirit, we ask you to perfect all that concerns them, establish them. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Hallelujah. My brother, my sister, there is this uh, a sister waving there with the black top. Please, can you just go to her? Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Can the worship team come and help us with the theme song? The theme song, the theme song. Hallelujah. We're going to round up with the theme song. Praise the Lord. And please, if you have not given your offering, the POS machine will be at the foyer and the platform will be dis displayed on the screen. Uh, to test, to give, to email your seed, and the Lord bless us all in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's just uh, sing this theme song before we round up.
important to one another. We need each other to survive. You cannot be an island. God did not create us to be an island. So we need each other. And as we have promised that we'll pray for one another, that we will not hurt each other with the words of our mouth. That is very important. And that is so strong. And my prayer this morning is as we have sung this song, God will give us the grace to put it into practice, to be the doer of every word in that song in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's lift up our hands unto the Almighty and let's begin to worship the Lord. I want you to worship him. Let's thank him for his presence. Let's thank him for how he has ministered unto us today. Thank him for his faithfulness. Thank you for the word that he has brought unto us. That we should live our life. Our life should be given to his word. Our life should be by his word. Our life should be built on his word. Our life should be fashioned and shaped by his word. Oh, Father, we bless you, Lord. Father, we receive grace, oh, Lord, Father, to spend time in your word, oh, Lord, that we will live our life by the rema word or from your, by the rema from your word, oh, Lord, Father. Thank you for your grace, oh, Lord, Father. Thank you for love that is binding us together, oh, Lord. Thank you because, Lord, the grace, oh, Lord, to pray for one another, not to hurt each other, oh, Lord, with the words of our mouth, oh, Lord, Father. Lord, we bless you, we worship you. We lift up ourselves before your throne. Let your name be glorified. Let's lift up our pastor before the Almighty, that as God is using him in the United Kingdom. We let's pray for fresh unction. Let's pray for fresh anointing upon his life, that lives will be changed, destinies will be transformed. No one under the unction of his voice will remain the same. The Lord will cause him to speak as his oracle and to minister with his ability. The almighty hands will envelop him in the name of Jesus. Father, I will lift up your son into your mighty hands, O Lord, concerning the work and the assignment you have given unto him in the in the land, O Lord, in the United Kingdom. We pray, O Lord, that you will uphold him. You will strengthen him. Your mighty hands will rest upon him. You will envelop him in your mighty hands, O Lord, Father. Thank you, Father, because you will cause him to speak as your oracle. Thank you, Father, because no one under the voice of your son will remain the same. Lives will be changed. Destinies will, tra will be transformed. Thank you for testimonies, O Lord, Father. We we'll bless your name, O Lord. We we'll give you all the glory. As we go, let your presence go with us. We commit the rest of today's service, O Lord, the Sunday school and the second service. We ask you to take absolute control. Let your name be glorified. As many as on their way, you will bring them safely here, O Lord. And as we we go home, your presence will go with us. We we'll bless you, we we'll worship you. The grace to live in your fullness we we'll receive, O oh Lord Father, every day of our lives in Jesus' name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. We give you all the glory, we give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Let's share the grace together in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless us all in Jesus' name. Let's remember next week we'll start the um, August summer blast. Next Sunday we're starting, so please just dress casually and again in the next, uh, I believe, seven minutes we'll be starting our Sunday school. Praise the Lord. God bless us all in Jesus' name. And 6 p.m. tonight, power hour.